when you take theater actor Michael Nichols and occasional in-tune singer Chris Brown, you have a hit on your hands. Now, if you were thinking about the Academy Award-winning director Mike Nichols and R&B singer Chris Brown, well, no, not them. Michael Nichols is a theater actor, singer, and entertainment critic from upstate New York, and Chris Brown is a podcast host who has a Disney Plus and Paramount Plus annual subscription from Alberta. Together, Michael Nichols and Chris Brown talk about the entertainment industry as two people who aren't the people you were thinking of only can. This is No, Not Them. Hey, Mike. <laughs> I'm literally trying not to die from occasionally in tune singer. <laughs> How are you? I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm oh, <laughs> Lord have mercy. I'm having a heart attack. Well, welcome to the show, everyone. As you can tell, we are switching things up in 2023. Michael and I are now in a new show where we are going to be trying to digest the biggest entertainment news stories of the last 30, 31 days or in February, 28 days or 29 days, depending on if it's a leap year. Michael, there's a lot of things that have happened and I'm excited to start this new venture with you. I know. I love it. We're on our own journey. We were just too popular and big for the main show. So much what like main show? There is no main show anymore. This much, is the main show. Much like Riverdale, we're getting a spinoff and it, we hope it lasts longer than a season. <laughs> That's no shade to Riverdale spinoff Katie Keene. There's a little bit of shade. I didn't even know they had a spinoff. So that oh, girl, they did. it was fucking fire too. It was so good, and it lasted a season. Okay, I thought but Sabrina. No, that's was, not about I, to be us. No, no, we're gonna go like six seasons in a movie for God's. Oh my God, we're getting a movie. Totally. Um. Lots of things have happened over the last 30 days since we last chat. Well, actually, we last chatted on the cross-border interviews in early December. But in January, starting the new year, we have lots of things to digest. And the biggest one I think we have to start with is Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin, who is known for his roles in Beetlejuice, Michael Nichols's Working Girl, Talk Radio, and The Hunt for Red October, is facing an involuntary manslaughter charge in connection with a death of a film cinematographer from last year. While on the movie set Rust in 2021, Baldwin discharged a revolver used as a prop, which led to the death of the movie cinematographer and injured the director. <clears throat> Baldwin now faces charges in from the, a district attorney in New Mexico where the film was being shot. It is expected, though, the movie will continue to be filmed and released at a later date. This is as the reports, as the filming this, it is still going to be shot. It is still going to be released. Michael, what's your thoughts on Alec Baldwin and this whole shit show of involuntary manslaughter? First of all, we're still releasing the movie? Yeah. That's who in the PR nightmare has to deal with that. I feel sorry for them. Well, I think it was the director who came out and said that they're releasing the movie. And this is from like E! News and all this. This is a choice. Um, I mean, he's. we, we all need to be very real here. He is not going to spend a day in jail. He's going to plead out for some pay a fine, community service type bullshit. Um, there was a lot of fucking around that happened apparently and they found out with someone unfortunately losing their life. And it's kind of gross that this is actually still being allowed to be released. Um, well, it's not, not the first time it's that. happened though, right? Like we look at The Crow with uh, Brandon Lee. He died while filming the movie The Crow and they still released it later on. Well, did he die? Because I'm not as familiar with this. Did he die or was he killed on set? He, he overdosed while on set. And then even the Imaginarium of Dr. Whatchamacallit with Heath Ledger, right? He died during filming and they brought in new people. And don't get me wrong, it's a cinematographer, so it's... And I, I hate to use these words because I have no, no bias here, but it's a cinematographer. 
it's still a person understandable but it's not an actor who like they need to change it out it's a cinematographer alec baldwin has said that they're going to give money to the family but uh, go ahead like there's a difference between and it's, it's there's a difference between someone unfortunately overdosing while filming a movie and someone shot on set and killed by another actor like all instances horrible but like this specifically mean would mean at least to me shut the fucking thing down it's done like your movie's gone like i'm sorry to whoever wrote it like alec baldwin then extra fucking who cares he doesn't need the money it's just it's going to and they're going to run with this shit to try and get them an oscar yeah and And uh -uh. so also along with alec baldwin the stunt coordinator or the ammunitions coordinator for the movie is also charged with involuntary manslaughter so it's not just they should be exactly so i'm not i should have prefaced that before that we started talking about this so alec baldwin is the name that's getting charged but there are other people in connections being charged with this as well the director is too right the director got shot I know, but I think he's also getting charged. I I did not read that. I could be. And he's the one who said that they're going to still, they're going to get back and film the rest of it and release it. So gross. Mm -hmm. Um, So it begs the question though, when this happens and there's a lot of talk about firearms on set, have, has the movie industry now decided that it needs to change when it comes to more safety and health and for health and safety around this type of stuff or is it just going to be the same old same old and unfortunately we're not going to learn from our mistakes and i'm and i'm not saying the. (laughs) so you think so you think we're not going to learn from no hollywood's gonna hollywood unfortunately you know you know Unfortunately, I don't want you to be right, but I think you are right, which is sad. Well, we're probably we're probably going to see a lot more regulations around firearm usage, and we're going to probably maybe see a little more safety precautions there. But Hollywood's going to Hollywood; they're not going to be aggressive. It's going to maybe be like an extra tweak. Yeah, I I kind of. There might be an extra person on set, so that way they double 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 check, but overall that's it hollywood's still gonna use guns and all that fancy dancy stuff they're just gonna be a little like another layer of pr red tape that they're gonna have to jump through to use these things right yep just like the covid precautions that are literally just hiring someone to sit there yeah mm -hmm, no comment about that i've talked to people in the entertainment industry in alberta and they say that is one of the things that happens on a regular basis Yep. It is what it is. Wednesday, Wednesday, they filmed that scene and the COVID the COVID person told Jenna Ortego, don't tell anyone you have COVID while they were filming the scene with most people. I did not know this. Oh yeah, it came out drama. No, no, no. We are not like Jenna Ortego was like, this is what happened, and this is the person, and like named names of like every single person who knew and had the decision making and still forced her to be on set when she was like, I have a fever and have COVID and I'm actively shedding. I can't be here. And they were trying to sue her for like breach of contract. Uh Uh-huh. Hollywood's going to Hollywood. Tim Burton? No. Is that who did the new Wednesday on Netflix? Yeah. Sure did. Sure is. Tim Burton, come on. Come on, Tim. I know. Who knew he was problematic? I do not believe it. No, me either. Insert eye roll here. Uh, Heading over to our next story and next topic is two-time Oscar nominee actor Jeremy Renner, who is known for his role as Hawkeye in the Marvel Avengers, revealed earlier this month that he had broken 30-plus bones and is currently on the mend after being run over by his snowplow on at the end of December. His recovery process is started. He is at home. He is doing exercises as of last update that we got prior to recording this. <sighs> actors going to be actors. Do we need to start? Do we need to take more nonchalant caring about when actors get injured by self-infliction? 
I mean, I think this is a tricky ground because like it's it's heartbreaking what happened, but like it doesn't stop my life. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's really sad what happened. Thank God he's alive. Like he's really lucky to be alive. Um, If anything, the big thing, we're going to probably see PSAs from him about snow safeties or shit once he's back out like let's be real hollywood is going to hollywood like he's gonna spin this into some psa type bullshit and right if if you're listening to this hollywood this is why we are the underqualified mike nichols and chris brown not the actor singer and is semi in tune singer chris brown so it, it, hollywood's gonna hollywood it, you're right you are completely right it is an when I heard the story, I, I kind of felt the exact same way that you did. I felt sorry for a second, but then I thought, okay, back to my life, back uh-huh. to my day to day life. Like, I, I, I feel sorry for his family. I feel sorry for him for what what happened to him. But he's gonna come back. He's gonna make twenty million dollars on his next movie, probably more than I'll see in my lifetime, unless I win the lotto. Hollywood's gonna Hollywood. And like that's just the reality of it like and hollywood can't even sit there hollywood wants to come on here and like deny that they aren't already coming up with a psa on like snow safety but that they can stick him in can like I, come but, on but the thing that i find funny because not funny haha but like okay this is weird this happened in new mexico the shooting on rust happened in new mexico Maybe Hollywood Don't get go to out New of Mexico. New- <laughs> get out of New Mexico, Hollywood. <laughs> Fucking don't go to New Mexico. It's not safe. It is not. Now, this is a story that caused a bit of a controversy between a singer and a portion of a country or a large, large country. Singer and songwriter Gwen Stefani is facing backlash after an in-person interview with Allure magazine. In the interview, while speaking about her father's job that had the family traveling back and forth between California and Japan, Stefani said her Japanese influence came from those travels. In a stunning statement, Stefani proclaimed, and I'm quoting, I said, my God, I'm Japanese and I did not know it, end quote. Michael, what's going on here? (laughs) You know this, you know this is my favorite thing right now. Miss Gwen Stefani was sitting up here going, I haven't been in the news in a while. I want to be canceled today. I should be canceled. Or, and so she gets up there and she proclaims this and everyone went, Oh, wait, girl, no. Because, I mean, yes, Stefani, the most Japanese of surnames. Um, Like, sis, that's Italian. Come on, let's stop playing, stop acting. Like, she just was, I think, trying to get ahead of, do you remember, like, 10 years ago when she did that whole Harajuku girl thing? Yeah. Yeah? I think she's trying to get ahead of it as people are now digging through the muck looking to, like, cancel celebrities but like she's not doing anything with her life she could have let that one die and nobody would have thought about it because now people are like oh wait no cancel her well no one's been thinking about her like i think the biggest thing that she's done in the last 10 years is what the voice with her husband (laughs) spin around on the voice once or twice and call it a day (laughs) exactly bring in a celebrity that you know and they'll come in and guest judge with you and it's like okay i I read the article because I wanted to see what this was all about when you first, and it like the, the shit that she shovels goes deeper and deeper as you read more and more. Like I could imagine like the allure magazine, when they tried to do this interview, it was going to be something else. Then you say something like, my God, I'm Japanese and I didn't know it. Like, did you not expect people to be upset about this? Like, I just don't understand why a celebrity, God bless them, because people seem to pay attention to who Gwen Stefani is. 
why they would open their mouth and say something so stupid and idiotic like this. But like, do they? I will be real. I haven't thought about Gwen Stefani since I saw her in Irvine in 2016. And then haven't thought about her since other than when she pops up on The Voice and I go, Gwen, what the fuck are you wearing? And you don't know anything about music. She don't. She does not know how to coach music. She can sing gorgeous, cannot coach. Well, she may not be able to coach, but in the same article, in the same article, she says there is an innocence to her relationship with the Japanese culture, referring to herself as a super fan. Now, I'm a super fan when it comes to Doctor Who, and I could tell you which dialect was killed in which episode. I'm not a super fan, and don't get me wrong, I'm assuming the Japanese culture is great. I probably wouldn't be able to tell you much about it because I've never been to Japan, but it seems like she is, she was trying to attract Japanese fans to her, but what she's ultimately done is push them away. So uh, this is a tricky world. Um, She, I think a majority of her fan base that still is active is based in Japan. Yeah. This is the same thing Avril Lavigne faces. The majority of her fan base is active in Japan. So when she says things or when Avril says things like this, us in America are like, girl, no. But it's appealing to her Japanese fan base. So that begs the question. That, okay, continue, and then I'm going to ask my question that's going to sort of supersede your statement that you're probably about to say. No, no, ask it, because I don't remember where I was going. <laughs> Is it Americans, like, and I, when I say Americans, I mean Americans and Canadians, because Canadians have a role to play in this as well. Is it the North American culture that is destroying the wording that people use? Is Because you're right, in ja- Japan, I'm assuming her fan base are going this is awesome like we're happy i could be wrong but in america you have to pick and choose the correct words in a correct sentence and if you don't you're automatically canceled here like you said it may have worked in japan but in canada in the united states it could be seen as cultural appropriation it could be seen as uh, you not understanding the Japanese culture. So is it just um, the North American culture that we're reading way too much into this story? It could, I mean, language means different things in different countries and in yeah. different l- linguistics and all that kind of when you factor it in. So while in the US, her statement is very culturally appropriative fetishization of the Japanese people, infantilization of the Japanese people. Like we in the US are like red flags, this is not okay in Japan, because I'm not as familiar with that, with the Japanese culture. It probably, it may not have had the same red flags that we got here in the North American continent. Yeah. Now, on to the next story, which we are going to go inside the wrestling ring for this story because former WWE star turned actor Dave Batista, or however you pronounce his last name, in an interview with Variety said, I never want it to be the next Dwayne Johnson. I just want it to be a good effing actor. Now, change effing to the actual swear word. And for those who don't know, Dwayne Johnson is the former wrestler, The Rock. The interview with Variety has ignited some friction between the two former WWE stars. And he, Batista, has also been making headlines with interviews regarding acting and his Marvel movie roles. Um, Is this biting the hand that fed you, Mike? I love that the girls are fighting. I love, live, laugh, love. I read that and had to reread it a few more times. I'm like, oh, she's really coming for the rock. Um, Like full, like coming straight. If the rock was wearing a wig, snatched. Like full snatch. 
Uh, brilliant. Love it. Dave Batista though, commenting on how Marvel is silly and he has dumb and blah, blah, blah. Like that got you your first little golden ticket into Hollywood. Maybe we shouldn't be shitting on the fucking but Marvel in, because- in the article with Variety, he goes, I don't care about the glamour, the glitz. I'm okay with living in Tampa, Florida, where I live. I don't need the Hollywood that Dwayne The Rock is chasing. I'm comfortable with just being who I am and going into more serious roles. But to get serious roles, you had to prove you could act. Yeah. Which is why The Rock is not getting roles and Dave Batista is. And it's like, because someone took a chance putting you in those Marvel movies, because those are his first like big movies, right? Those, those were his like, first. Yeah, that was his biggest, that was his like breakthrough, right? I think so. I'm going to throw his name in there right now into the old gurgle. The gurgle, gurgle, um, gurgle, gurgle. 2014 was the first movie he was in. Besides, and like, it was Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't think they're, oh, Riddick. And yeah. Oh, no, the Scorpion King, which, I mean, anyone can be in the Scorpion King. They're just Who's kind of, this? you stand there. Dave Batista. Dave Batista. Oh, he was probably in the Scorpion King because Dwayne Johnson was in the Scorpion King yeah. because he was the Scorpion King. Um, this no he literally his first real like other than riddick which i don't think he was a big name because i clearly don't remember him was guardians of the galaxy so like bro you started doing movies and being taken seriously because you got a chance taken on you the uh, how do i say this the the wwe act of uh, the, the wwe wrestlers because oh. they're not actors wink wink uh, <laughs> um They've always been compared to The Rock. When John Cena made his switch from WWE to acting, there was always that idea of, are you just The Rock who is skinnier, smaller, and whiter? And... <laughs> you called him smaller? Oh, you are now coming for John Cena's wig. Well, I'm sorry. If he could act, I could actually watch it as something that he's in. So until then, I'll, uh, I will hold my breath. Um... Again, Cashed. under un, underqualified. I have a Disney Plus subscription and a Paramount Plus subscription. That's my qualifications for doing this show. I you don't get Paramount Plus now. Uh, yeah. Fuck off. Fuck off. Okay. Just because we're Canadian doesn't. Woo! For those who are not <laughs> watching this, <laughs> tune over to YouTube. Um, is The Rock the gold standard of WWE stars? No. Tur <laughs> Okay, who is? Oh, I'm Hulk sorry, Hogan? hold on, no, finish it, finish it, finish it. You were are, saying I'm not. Are de is The Rock the gold standard of WWE wrestlers turned actor? I don't know about gold standard. He, but they're the he's one, definitely like, the he's biggest He's the bankable name. one, right? He's the bankable one. You put The Rock in something, it's going to do well. Uh, I think there's a couple of box office movies that would beg to differ. Black night. Adam first would like a word. Yeah, but I think it did well. Girl, it was DC. Of course it was going to do shitty, but still, it probably did better than some of the other movies that they put out. Yeah, I mean, The Rock is well, is universally well known and he gets a lot of work. Yeah. He and Vin Diesel for were the are the hardest no not Bruce Willis. Him and Bruce Willis for a while were the hardest working actors because they were putting out like 10 movies a year. Yeah, and all of them were Fast and the Furious because they all suck. No, Vin Diesel was fast. I, Bruce Willis is who I meant to say. They're both bald old the Rock is The Rock is in the Fast and the Furious. Also. Well. Oh, yeah, he is. <gasps> I forgot that. Wow. I clearly don't watch those movies. <laughs> again, again, two underqualified people talking about the entertainment industry. And one's not, um, in, one's not in tune singer. <laughs> Um, I mean, he's the one who gets cast the most. So, like, I guess he's, I don't know. I don't want to say gold standard because then that implies that he's good. Okay. I mean, Dave Batista was not lying when he threw that shade. Yeah, but it would be better if Dave Batista could act as well. Uh, I don't know if I made that statement. Last time you you literally of... went so high, the audio cut out. 
Well, I um, don't know if I agree with that statement because I think he actually did a pretty great job in Glass Onion, which is, I think, the first thing that he's done that's not like a big budget action blockbuster. Agree to disagree. <laughs> So our last story that we want to talk about for the month of January is the long-awaited memoir, Spare, by Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex, was released on January 10th and has caused some palace insiders to come to the fence of the royal family. Harry has been on a book tour sitting down with Stephen Colbert, Anderson Cooper, and the British media. Was the book a bigger bombshell than anticipated, or was it a spare Bowling term. Ah. I feel like you should have been like, was it a spare or was it a strike? Wow. Well, you read the <laughs> stories in March, okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, I have not read it yet. It's on the list. I know you've gotten the joy of reading it. it talks about his penis a lot from what I've been seeing. Yeah, a lot of homoerotic. Uh, like, it's basically worse than, like, Fifty Shades of Grey sometimes. Sign me up. Okay. Sign me up, please. So, um, go ahead. No, I don't know where I was going. It was probably going to be raunchy, so you need to cut me off. Okay. I'm going to... I anticipate... I, when I, when I, I did not want to read this book. I will be the first to admit I did want to read the book because I'm a, I, I, I'm a Queen Elizabeth fan, now King Charles III fan. And I, I went in with a very open mind. I tried to have an open mind when reading this book. There's a lot of this book that leaves a lot to the imagination. We're only getting one side of this story. And the, the, the Megan and Harry have built this idea that we're going to tell our story. Understandable. But you're telling your story from your side of perspective. You know the palace cannot confirm or deny anything that you say. So it makes me suspect when I'm reading a book that I can't fact check with other memoirs. You can fact check because there's people who have come out and said yes or no, or maybe possibly with this one. It's all from Harry's perspective. There's a part in the book and it's been well told now where he talks about getting into a fight with his brother, Prince William the duke of uh the prince of uh wales I, I i can imagine it happens brothers fight is it newsworthy is it book worthy no but he thought it was and i know he got paid by a, he paid a ghostwriter to write this and you can tell it's not him writing this because it, you could actually read a coherent sentence from time to time and it was an actual story and like the way he talks and the way he gives interviews it's just bad oh i'm sorry for those who are not watching this right now michael is shaking his head like i'm attacking his favorite boy right now um out of 10 i i, I don't think it was the big shocker that a lot of people have built it up to be it was it was a book. That's all I can say. There were words written on a page. <laughs> um, there was to numbers. your point. To your point, though, about like, is it newsworthy that two brothers are fighting? No, but it's the royal family. Just like it would be newsworthy if like Daniel Radcliffe was fighting with his brothers. Like, yes, it, it happens. I don't, think it, I don't think that is newsworthy, though. I mean, but unfortunately, with the cult of celebrity being a thing, like yeah. that is unfortunately a newsworthy thing and is a poignant thing. Like me and my brother were fist fighting on Mother's Day and in Diana's memory or like, like that's it's newsworthy, whether it is or isn't, because I mean, it, I think the big thing and I think you confirmed this for me, because like I said, I haven't read it yet. I, it's on my list is he didn't talk at all about the Nazi stuff that happened. Yeah. And like, Harry, that's what we want to know. Like what was going through your head at that time? What was going through your head where you said, mm -hmm. you know what? I know it's a private place. I know it's a private party. I'm going to dress up as a Nazi in Vegas. 
yeah. like, I mean, and that's I, yeah. go ahead. And well, and that's kind of the, the issue I'm having with memoirs. Like, because I read, a, I've actually read a couple of memoirs this month. Um, I read Tom Felton's. I read Alex, Al, Alex, Alec, no, Alan Rickman. Jesus Christ, I had a short circuit for a second. Um, I know. I the robot put the batteries back in. <laughs> um, it's the stuff that we want to know in the book when they're much younger, because Harry's under forty isn't necessarily going to be what they're writing about because they're still young, they're still working, they're not looking to potentially damage their entire career. Whereas if they wait till they're 50, 60, and they're kind of done or at the point of being deemed legend and it doesn't matter what kind of comes out or who they cut down, that's when you're gonna get a more truthful um, autobiography because I read Tom Felton's uh, around the time you were reading Harry's and Tom Felton's was good the most interesting part was the last two chapters when he kind of lightly touched on his stint with re rehab and uh, with using and it was it was like wait hold on this whole first 200 pages of this book have just been about how much you love every cast member of Harry Potter and how much you love this and that like there was no way y'all were getting along the whole time like who did you try and like date who were you fighting with like you definitely got into a fist fight with somebody like that's what i want to know but because he's still so young and he's kind of just trying to restart his career after everything happened um with his using uh it it's like you don't want to ruffle feathers so yeah. I, it, I i can see that it it brings me back to the idea of the not the idea but the uh the book my life by bill clinton um, when Bill Clinton left office as president of the United States, he wrote a book, which all presidents usually do. And the one thing that everyone wanted to know was the Monica Lewinsky part, right? They wanted to know what was going on with the Monica Lewinsky. And literally, it was about a paragraph and a half. It wasn't that much in detail. Like, it might have been two pages tops. And everyone wanted, went, okay, well, this isn't what we, like, we we yeah. don't care about the stupid stuff because honestly, you're not going to be remembered for the peace accord that you signed between Israel and Palestine. You're What you're going to be remembered for is putting a cigar where the sun doesn't shine for in a woman. So I don't understand uh, why some things were dropped and maybe book two, like, spare two call it a strike like maybe that's what the sequel is going to be called um maybe it's going to be maybe it's, he's going to talk about it there i don't know i just i wish there was a little bit more self uh, awareness of what was going on in his life because he talks about going to afghanistan killing people but that isn't who we know we know the kid who was struggling after his mom died going to Vegas, getting completely shit-faced drunk while wearing a Nazi costume or even stripping and doing that in Vegas. It's just, there was a lot to be left on the, there was a lot of left on the cutting room floor. And I just feel like if he would have just focused it a little bit more, it would have been a lot better for me. I would highly recommend it if you want, if you're a Royal fan, it may not be your cup of tea though. I have two questions. Go for it. One, does he talk about the reality show he did in the U.S.? Oh, he did a whole dating reality show in the U.S. Okay. He talks about dating a celebrity and how she, like, which caused controversy over in the U.K. as well, because he talks about how she was abused and how she, the media attacked her and which led her to kill herself. Not fully, but, you know, uh, led to some struggles that she had. And he talks about that, which caused the family of the girl to come out and say, you shouldn't have done that. That was rude. That was insensitive. So, no. And did he call it spare because he's trying to say he's like the spare brother that they don't care about? Well, that's what the, that's what the care that's what the whole thing was all about. Because technically, uh, if you are in line to be the king or queen, you have two children just in case the first one dies. And he literally says that because that was his nickname, sort of nicely. Nickname was spare because if William died, he would have been king. I mean, 
not anymore because Harry and or not Harry, uh, yeah. George and Louis and Charlotte are all in line as well. I mean, it may. I, he has a lot of is, uh, identity issues that would be solved with therapy. Yeah. Prince Harry, go to therapy, please. We all, you know what? Prince William, also, please go to therapy. Before you become king in about six years. Yeah, I, oh, I'm a big advocate for therapy. And if there's anyone that needs it, it's the royal family after everything went down with their mother and father. Yeah, and that gets to be replayed over and over again with the crown. Um, well, everyone's just so fascinated by it and is so fascinated by this one tragedy. And like, and specifically, the United States is very fascinated by it. And it, it's, it's just, it's heartbreaking. And to have to constantly be reminded of it happen everywhere. True. Understandable. It's what it is. So with that, that has been the news that's been, well, that's been making the news for the last month. Now we're going to be talking about what, what are we reading? What are we watching? What are the things that we're paying attention to? That's right. Mike Nichols, the actor, Oscar nominated uh, director, um, and Chris Egon. Brown, the, R- the R&B singer songwriter who has been canceled more times than he probably wants to be. Um, so Mike Nichols, no, not those two people. It's Mike Nichols and Chris Brown again. <laughs> I'm hilarious. I feel like that's going to get old after like the second episode. And we're just going to be like, hi, welcome to Not Us. This is this. Oh, girl. <laughs> I am changing it every single time that I possibly can. I'm just saying, I think you're going to get bored with that. Nope, nope. I would never get bored of making fun of Chris Brown. <laughs> While we're on the topic, though, of Prince Harry, the book I'm currently reading, Red, White, and Royal Blue, by Casey McQuiston, which is about the first son of the United States and his sordid love affair with Prince Harry. Or Henry, Prince Henry, sorry. It Which, is wild. I am like, this is filthy. I'm reading this and I'm like, okay, a lot of these young gay, like young adult gay, like romancy books, they're like, oh my God, we kissed. And like, that's how it ends. Like this one, they're like fucking in like Wimbledon. They're like fucking everywhere. I'm like, y'all need to control your fucking hormones, you young 20-year-old twinks. Which, um, it, it, if you haven't seen the book, you if you haven't read the book, it's going to be coming to a, uh, I think it's Netflix that bought the rights to it. And is it coming to uh, Pornhub? Because, <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, they're constantly like fucking rabbits. Well, I mean, I'm here for it. I'm, like, reading this, and it's funny. It's really, really funny. I'm like cackling reading through it. I'm like, this is great. Like the writing is so smart, but it's filthy. It's raunchy, raunchy. I want to know, Miss Miss Casey, what sort of disturbing fantasies are you concocting up, and how can I be included? Well, I think there's like three sequels to it, isn't there, or at least two? <gasps> Don't tell me that. I think so. I could have to buy them all. <laughs> um, it's better than Fifty Shades of Grey, is what you're saying? Fuck who? <laughs> Fifty Shades of No, thank you. Um, and then I actually started a book club with uh, a bunch of friends of mine, and our first book that we read was A Court of Roses and Thorns by Sarah J. Moss. Another romance novel except this time they just ripped off the plot of the beauty and the beast except with fairies it's true and like masquerade masks i'm like ooh, okay we're getting a little family opera up in this bitch so you're but reading like, a lot more these days i am on this is book number 10 for me since january 1st wow Good for you. i've been a crazy person um uh, i also well but what books before i go to tv and movie what books are you consuming besides prince harry's kill uh, despair so well as you know i've been going through a big tom clancy phase right now i'm reading the uh, last few books that have come out in 2022 and 2021 
So I'm reading those. Uh, ever since uh, Tom Clancy passed away, the book writing has gone down, but I kind of feel obligated because I'm so invested into the first like 19 books. I need to continue on. So I'm still reading them. I just read one, uh, one, of, his, one of Tom Clancy's books that was written by someone else. I forget his name right now. It's right on my shelf. It's Against All Enemies. It's in the Jack Ryan universe, but it's not Jack Ryan main character it's like other people is when jack ryan becomes president in the series and it's like what happens in the cia which is like oh that's cool but then you read and you're like oh so boring <laughs> just give me just give me jack ryan he does better so i read that and then i recently just bought michelle obama's Beco becoming sorry becoming which i read the first chapter and i put it down um good you're gonna you. finish her right And then I, uh, what other books? You shady, do not come for Miss Michelle Obama like that. I, I was, I was open to reading it. I wasn't going to read it. I read her husband's Adossi of Hope. I read her, uh, the other book that he read, uh, Feathers of a Father, I think it's called. I read those. Faith of Faith and Father, something something about his dad. Um, I read those two books and I, I liked them. And then I read hit her book because she has a new one that just came out and I wanted to see how I'd like it. It was like three dollars at the used bookstore. So I picked it up and I read the first chapter and well here we are. Uh the new Cassandra Clare book comes out yesterday as of this airing. So I'm probably about halfway done that book, which is Chain of Gold, which is the third in the series. So I'm looking forward to that one. And then in February, Rick Riordan Presents has four books coming out and I've already pre-ordered them and I'm looking forward to hitting all of those because Percy Jackson Universe is God. So that's what Literally. I mean. Oh, <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. So those those yeah. are what, those are what I'm reading. It's not nothing too exciting, nothing too spectacular, but it's keeping me entertained while I'm doing that other show that shall not be named right now. But what are you watching? I started watching The Mole on Netflix, like the Anderson Cooper The Mole. I don't know if it's Anderson Cooper, but it, I, it used to exist and then I took it off air and then now Netflix has it. And so it's a new season. Yeah, it's... Anderson, Anderson Cooper used to be the host of that. I oh, know. and like somebody secretly the mole trying to lose the money. It's, I'm literally over here like calculating. Like I look like that dude with like the strings, like that meme of the guy with the yep. str If that's what it's from, where I'm like, like trying to figure it out. My husband was like, I don't want to watch this show. It's dumb. And now he's like, who's the mall? What's this? What's happening? I'm like, oh, I thought you did not want to watch her. Has it come back? I don't, I don't, it's, it's back on Netflix. I mean, it's, I'm halfway through the Netflix season. Um, it's brand new, like brand, brand new. Cause I okay. saw it on TikTok. Someone was like, oh my God, the mole. And I'm like, who's this? Um, and keeping up the vein of, watching television programs that are reality shows i also watched the circle and am very pleased with the winner despite the fact that i felt it should have been someone else it was one of the three that i wanted to win with who was left okay. so i'm okay with that okay. and then uh, let's see i also started kaleidoscope i'm about halfway through but i find are the, you like, watching it in uh, not the order that it's presented on netflix but in different orders as they say you can yeah, and I'm. I, it's jarring. Like I want it just chronological. I. It's very difficult to follow. It's great acting. It's brilliant writing. It's so cool. It's just so hard for me to like focus on it. Uh, and if if it's something that I have to put so much attention to when I'm watching it, it makes it difficult for me to sit there and binge it. Which I mean, props to them. It means I'm going to watch it for longer. But it's just I. I I want to be able to kind of sit down and like focus, but not have to be like so intently aware of like what time period is this? How close to the heist is this? What's happening? I assume you watched Kaleidoscope also. I watched it in uh, because I saw an article that said you can watch it whatever order and you always come up with a different ending no matter what. And I was like, I challenge you to that. So I watched it in a random order, got some of my other friends to watch it in the actual order. And I was like, oh, how'd you like this? And they're like, hmm. It's like, yeah, okay understandable 
So I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I um, I'm still about halfway through. I don't. I'm. I don't know. I kind of set it down. I'm like, this is a lot of brain focusing. I need yeah. to do. And for me, the guy with the tumor in his brain can't focus, and I do. <laughs> what? Um, what am I watching? We just finished Salem. We watched the first three seasons of Salem that came out earlier in like. 2017 i think it was we finished that we loved it um uh, my husband's a big witch and vampires and all that stuff so we watched that so that was good uh what other show have we been watching we watched national treasure edge of history oh and, i do like that one and, uh, um, we got def- Zeta jones we got into four episodes we're only four episodes in right now so as of recording we're four episodes in i'm liking it i like ben uh not ben uh riley uh riley coming back that was what i was looking for i like the throwbacks that they're doing to the old uh, movies which i was happy for overall though <sighs> um catherine zeta jones knows how to wear a fucking outfit between national treasure and fucking wednesday i'm ready to like physically fight her i love her her so much she's great great actress and looks fucking stunning in everything so that's his unqualified opinion my, <laughs> <laughs> my unqualified like, opinion you are just so beautiful um she's she's there <laughs> i will fight you okay i don't mind it it's not my favorite go-to but if it's there's nothing else on will you throw that on uh my husband and i've been watching pose pause posey pose. oh, oh. yeah uh, ryan murphy's with yeah MJ. So, so we got through the first season we're gonna head into season two now and eh, it's not bad uh i don't know uh what's his name the guy who played Dahmer in the Dahmer series evan peters evan peters doesn't is, come back Oh, good. Um, I lo- I don't. Kate Mara was awesome in it, though. Kate Mara as a freaking like, ooh, ooh. and uh, Electra. Huh. Dominique Jackson, brilliant. Who? Oh, that's, that's the Electra. Act- that's the actress's name. Okay. So that's yeah. what we've been watching for movies. We haven't been watching much, which we're going to be talking about in a few minutes. Why and what we're going to be doing over the next few months. Um, but overall, it's been. A pretty uh, January month. A lot of shows hasn't re- haven't returned yet, and they're just slowly getting back up to start. So, yay! Okay, so I'm so that- happy you're watching Pose. I feel like I was trying to for years get you to watch it. So I'm so happy you're watching it, though. Um, did you ever watch Roseanne? Yeah. You know that last season, how it like really jumps the shark. Yeah, I've heard that on season three. Sure does, but I'm not gonna lie. I was here for it because, like, I heard it like jumps like 15 years within like three episodes, and you're like, "What happened here? What's going on? What's happening?" It's I really liked season three because sometimes you just want to see something happy, like which is weird. Season three isn't on Disney Plus yet. Uh, Oh, it might be on Netflix or Hulu still. We don't have Hulu. Remember, um, I'm trying unqualified. to qualified. We only have Paramount Plus and Disney Plus. I have my brother in law's Hulu. We wouldn't be able to get it in uh, Canada. Really? That's we've, problematic. We've tried, and because everything on Hulu is on Disney Plus in Canada. Oh, because that's owned weird. By that... The same company. That's so weird. Pose isn't. Season yeah. three isn't. It's, it, it's, it's, it's a great show. It's fun. Yeah. Ah, so we turn to our last segment, the big one. The big mother of all award shows has announced its lineup for the nominees for the 94th Academy Awards, which is going to be in March. And Michael and I have uh, placed our friendly wager bet again for 2023. We have planned to watch all the uh, categories, all the movies that have been nominated as much as we can find. I think we all watched but all but one last year. 
Uh, One or two, I yeah, think. Yeah, it was very weird. So with that, leading the pack for the 2023 Academy Awards is the indie Asian sci-fi movie Everything, Everywhere, All at Once with 11 nominations. As my, it should be. Okay, so that is one of my eight movies that I, nine movies that I have not seen yet. So that oh, you've is, only seen not you've seen everything but nine. No, I've seen nine movies. You've seen all but four. No, no, I've only seen four. That's why I was very confused by the sentence you just said. I was like, well, no. So nine. I haven't seen. So out of the nine that I've seen, that does not include everything, everywhere, all at once. So that is going to be one of my weekend movies, probably this weekend. Where after recording this, probably by the time this airs, I will have seen it. Uh, so you're saying good movie? Oh, I really liked it. It's one of those you have to focus, um, also because it's half in English and half in Japanese. No. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say Cantonese, but I don't want to, I don't want to assume. Oh, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. Um, it's so good. It's insanely good. Um, uh, so and best, for best picture, the nominees for best picture were All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar the Water, The Way of the Water, or Way of Water, The Banshees of Inish Inish Hiran, uh Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fable Man, Tar, Top Gun Maverick, Triangle of Sadness, and Women Talking, which is directed and produced by Canadian. Sarah Polly, which I'm excited for because she is amazing. Um, shocker at the best picture? Uh, who the fuck let Top Gun Maverick? Top movie of the year. I knew it was going to be nominated. It's the it's the Black Panther of this year. How? But they haven't done that since. Like Black Panther was a good movie. I haven't seen Top Gun Maverick. I've not seen the original Top Gun. I literally asked my work group chat today. I'm like, I watch all the movies. Do I have to watch the original Top Gun to understand Top Gun Maverick? And I got texted back like 12 people going, you have to. It's the best movie of the year. And I'm like, what is this nonsense? We're not going to put... Go ahead. We're not going to put Megan up there, but we're going to put Top Gun. Disrespectful. Megan, Megan came out in 2023, though. So I feel like so did some of these other ones. Girl, there's one from 2021, and we all know that Chris Brown was really pissed off when there was a movie from 2021 nominated, 2020 you nominate for the 2022 Oscars. You do not do this. You have to release in the year that it says it's released. If you release the year before, why not just call it, you know what? Fuck it, Oscars. Fuck it all, Oscars. I'm just, it's just disrespectful to Megan. Um, Out of the top <laughs> movies. Like, like, yeah, sure, Jan. <laughs> You do you, girlfriend. Um, out of the ones that I have seen, I've seen the Banshees of Inish Hiran. I've seen Did Elvis. You like it? No, I think it was nominated because it's uh, what's his name? Not Colin, but the other one. Uh, that's gonna bother me now. Uh, I've seen uh, Top Gun Mavericks, and those are the three that I've seen so far. There. Uh, the Fable Man is on our playlist for this weekend, which I'm looking forward to. We rented it, so looking forward to that one. Um, over, I, I've never heard of Tar before, so that was the one that I was a little shocked at. I was not shocked. It was cleaning up was at it? the film festivals. Oh, but yeah. You, have you seen it? No, I've been wanting to see it. I was waiting to see if it actually got nominated. I shouldn't have waited. I should have just jumped on in. Um, but I'm very excited for that one. I do love Kate Blanchett. So the big controversy throughout today's, uh, and uh, when this was released, which we're literally recording the night of these release, was the director category. Once again, five male directors after being shut out or after female i think one last year or uh, uh that was power of the dog right yeah she went for power of the dog i think so uh, then, then coda won for best picture 
93rd Tony Awards Best Director went to Oscars, not Tony Girl. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> uh, Chloe Zhao for Nomad Land. Oh yeah. no, that was that was two years year. ago. Was that last year? That was two years ago. Oh, that was two years ago. So Chloe Zhao and Jane Campion. So two years in a row. Um, yeah. So uh, we're back to the all male director category with, uh, I think the Daniels could potentially pick it up with everything everywhere all at once because I've heard that they did an amazing job directing it. The question though is, is this Michelle Yao's uh, year to claim top prize? So I've been seeing a lot of chit chat conversation about how people are worried Kate Blanchett in Tar is going to unseat what should be Michelle Yeoh's Oscar. Yeah. Are you shocked that Jamie Lee Curtis got nominated? No. Really? I'm not. Because her I name was not them. mentioned at all during any of the other awards shows. And then I was like, holy crap, it's uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. That movie is really just insanely good. Is, is it your front runner right now for Best Picture? I, listen, I don't even want to say that because I've lost Best Picture four years in a row. <laughs> so I want to be like, it's Top Gun Maverick that's going to win because I'm at the point where I don't want to jinx. I mean, I've only seen everything everywhere. I'll, it's the only one of the top okay. of the Best Pictures I've seen. So I can't be really so expertly judging yet but i really think it's gonna it's gonna pick up a lot i think best actor best supporting actor it's definitely got in the bag i think best supporting actress should go to stephanie um stephanie who's uh yeah because she really you don't think angela uh, basket is gonna or bassett is gonna win? i haven't seen it i haven't oh, seen black panther yet that's true. It, it comes out out. February 1st on Disney Plus. It comes out today. Go watch it, everyone. It today. I know what I'm doing tonight. <laughs> Woo! Um I I'm not shocked at some of these nominations. Uh no. the uh technical nominations, I'm not shocked at as well. I'm surprised the Batman picked up as much as it did. Um that one and Top, top Gun. I top, don't. Top, I just can't. Top Gun's gonna win a lot. Top Gun is going to win a lot of Oscars. I'm putting not that out Avatar. There. No, I think Avatar is gonna have the Lord of uh, the Two Towers issue. Oh, uh, but the yeah. first one didn't win. I mean, not the first. The first Lord of the Rings didn't win. The second one didn't win. The third one swept. Exactly. So when they release the fourth Avatar, I think it's gonna sweep. Oh, I hate the Avatars. Um, I'm just not any shock, any any big uh, snubs that you found. Um, Viola Davis in Women King and Olivia Coleman in Empire of Light. That's what I heard as well. I heard that Olivia Coleman and uh, Viola Davis did amazing in those two jobs, in those two roles. <laughs> but at the same time, if Olivia Coleman was nominated, she would have won. So, like, let's just leave that. Let, let's just leave that. <laughs> I mean, Tom Hanks in Elvis. Razzie Awards. Who doesn't it like a good Razzie Award? The fact that Blonde, the Marilyn Monroe character from Blonde, picks up an Oscar nomination, and then everyone else in that movie picks up a Razzie Award nomination. Living. I just don't understand why she got, I haven't seen the movie. It's, I looked at it. I saw it was three hours long and said, this is a commitment. Um, black and this white. is like, a, black and white. this is a marital commitment yeah. watching this movie. Um, I might try and ambush my husband with it on like a Saturday or Sunday and not tell him that's what we're doing. Uh, I'm terrible. That's how I watched. That's how we watched um, West Side Story last year because he had zero interest because he hates West Side Story. Um, and so I was like, "Surprise! Look what we're watching!" And we were already like in it. And he's like, "Oh, I hate this." Good times. 
Um, but <laughs> so as always, friendly wager for the nominations. We are going to be doing our nomination picks uh, at episode the Thursday before the award ceremonies. We so we between now and March, I want to say seventeenth is the. Hold on. When is yeah? I was just about to say when is this award show? Because I need to be ready by that point, so that I can. I'm like I, I'm March twelfth. So March twelfth is the uh, nomination. So the, the March twelfth is the ceremony. So that means on the 9th of March. So we have l- more o- over a month and a bit to watch as many as we possibly can, which basically means that Michael's reading ability is about to get severely sidetracked until after the Oscars. So So there's 54 movies. Yep. I do not watch any movie that only got a song nomination. So like if you just got a song nomination, which I think is there's two of them that only got for song. Yeah. They will not be watched. I'm going to go listen, plug it into boop, boop, boop on the YouTube and go, oh, love it. Gorgeous. Listened. Done. Yeah. Um, that's how I'm going to handle it. I can watch the shorts between clients. Yep. It's really going to be the animated films, the international films, the like the live, all the, the like full feature length ones in the documentaries. It's going to be the bulk of it. I, if I watch them, but I'm just like, at a normal time and not like at a nine or 10 o'clock at night, I can still read from nine to 11. I, I'm on this reading journey. I have to commit, but I also have to win this. So if the book needs to be put down a little bit for February, I'm there. I, I'm ready. I'm going hard this year and I'm going to pick up, I'm going to, I'm going to sweep it this year. I'm pulling that, I'm pulling it out right now because there's not a lot of Canadians nominated. So, you know, I don't need to vote for them anymore. <laughs> um, Michael Nichols, the, not that one, the other Michael Nichols, how, uh, that's it. We've accomplished what we didn't think we could. Our first episode under our belts as no, not them, but the other Mike Nichols and Chris Brown. Thanks for doing this with me. It's always a delight. It's always a good time. I'm just shocked. We, I'm pretty sure did it in under an hour. No, we went more than an hour. Of course we did. Come on. we, we... Did we? Yeah, we, uh, yes. I was going to say we started at a certain time, but we're recording this and it's coming out at a later time. So if I say this and they're listening, it's like, it's not that time. So, yeah. I mean, I feel like this is going to bump us over an hour, but I really think we did it. We uh, we could. I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll know when I edit this and I go, ha ha, I was right. You were wrong. Or ha ha, I'm you were open. right. I was wrong. <laughs> um, I'm so, open to be proved wrong. So with that. As always, you've just listened to two semi, well, one one qualified person and one very unqualified person talking about the entertainment industry from no, not them. Is it that? Is that what we're calling it? Is it no, not them or no, not yeah, them? I, this no, this shows them. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we got to put the batteries back into you. It's been a long day and we're just getting started. So with that, this has been episode one of No, Not Them with Michael Nichols and Chris Brown. We'll be back at the end of the month to talk about the biggest news stories in February. Till then, everyone, talk to you later. You're not going to say anything? You're fucking not going to say anything? Oh, I don't know. I'm so used to to I'm so used to the other show I do where he's like, I say the last word. I'm like, okay, girl. (laughs) Not the other show I'm on with you. (laughs) No, the other, other show. The other Tyra. (laughs) Till then.